Today's sermon title is FOMO. That's F-O-M-O. It's FOMO. And what that stands for is fear of missing out. And today's scripture passage comes from Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. Again, that's Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, You must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Amen. Word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. Now the past few weeks, you can see, uh, actually the past couple months, uh, there's been uh, one common news that's been uh, spreading um, pretty much um, all across the world. Um, And it's the news about uh, coronavirus. And hence, which is why we're having uh, our worship online today. Uh, Every morning, Every afternoon and every evening, uh, there are corona updates on the news here in South Korea. You know, no one wants to miss out on the latest news of corona, uh, whether it's on Instagram, whether it's on Facebook, uh, the news, the media. Uh, if you hear that annoying, that annoying emergency alarm ringing on your phone, um, it means that um, there's a notification on uh, where the coronavirus was, uh, was uh, found this time. Um, also, if there's any uh, places that you should uh, be careful of to not go to, uh, these, no- these, and these notifications, they raise anxiety. Uh, they create some sort of, uh, like, it, they, they make people panic sometimes. And this anxiety also make people uh, go into a mode of, they want to be, hur- they're hurrying and they're preparing for the outbreak. But sometimes it, it may have gone a bit too far. Uh, people are um, currently right now, people are overbuying. Uh, they may be uh, binge purchasing uh, toilet paper, water, hand sanitizers, masks. Uh, even out here in South Korea right now, there's a shortage of masks right now. And pretty much the more uh, you have, uh, the more satisfied a person may feel, uh, the more safer a person feels. And sometimes just one isn't enough. Uh, this is a picture of people lining up in Korea to buy masks. And again, people in South Korea and um, in Asia, uh, they were pretty much binge purchasing masks. Uh, Some of them were actually even selling these masks for a ridiculous amount of money. Uh, And this shows that this anxiety of needing more and the virus causing panic uh, within the countries, the only thing that'll make people feel better and safer is if they have more of these masks, if they have more sand sanitizers, and if they have more water. You know, the same thing in the U.S. and Australia. Uh, I want you to uh, check this picture out. Uh, There's some people at Costco. There's some people at uh, Target. And they're also binge buying on toilet paper and water and sanitizer for the same reasons. Uh, This corona outbreak has raised a lot of anxiety and have caused people to panic over um, how they should prepare. And pretty much how they're preparing for this virus outbreak, even out in the States and in places like Australia is they're just buying more and more and more stuff that they need to prepare for this outbreak. Now, this is what you call FOMO. Again, FOMO, that's spelled F-O-M-O. And it stands for fear of missing out. Uh, in Korean, it's like, um, how can you say? In Korean, it's, it's something like, uh, It's an anxiety where people desire to stay continually connected with what others are doing. And we have to constantly look and depend on media to access all this unlimited information about the coronavirus. This anxiety, what happens is it causes people to panic. And then when they panic, they have to find ways to get rid of this anxiety and also get rid of this uh, panicking feeling by either binge purchasing things or getting more and more stuff that you need to prepare. That, That way people will feel like they're prepared. They feel more safe. 
is not just during this outbreak around the world, it's also during our everyday lives as well. On Instagram or on TV, uh, you see people traveling to nice places sometimes and sometimes you look at their pictures or you see programs where people are traveling and uh, you feel jealous. You, know, you, you, you look at the screen and sometimes you can be like, wow, they're so lucky. You know, in Korean we say, ah, 좋겠다, 아, 진짜 부럽다. Or maybe a student is in Hagwon, right, in after school, and others are at the park playing with their friends. And um, you know, in Korean we say, ah, 부럽다. You know, I wish I could be there. Man, I'm so jealous. I, I wish I could be there uh, playing too rather than being in school right now. Uh, or Facebook or Instagram. The more friends you have, the more likes you have, the more followers you have, uh, the better it is for you. It's all for me, for me to be satisfied. Or kakao tok, uh, people are constantly messaging each other nonstop. Or when a new, new electronic, te- when new technology comes out, uh, when the latest, uh, for example, when the latest iPhone comes out or when the newest uh, Samsung phone comes out, uh, people want, to, they just have to have the latest stuff. Why? Because it satisfies their desires. Um, and at times, sometimes phones and technologies, it's even in our hands. Right? And if believe it or not, this is power that's in our hands. We want more because one is not enough. I need more stuff. I need more of the stuff I see on media. It has to be in my hands. I want to get more so that I can be satisfied. If I don't get the stuff I want, then I'm dissatisfied. Now, today I'm not here to preach to you about phones being evil or technology being evil. What I want to challenge you today is in this way. I want to challenge you to take a moment to press off on your phones and press on towards something you'll never miss out on. Again, take a moment to press off on your phones and technologies for a sec and press on towards something you'll never miss out on. And that's life with Jesus Christ. Trust me. You don't want to miss out on a chance to live with Christ. Have eternal life with God. So press on for your, press off on your phones for a moment and press on towards Jesus. Ironically, we see FOMO, this fear of missing out in the story of Adam and Eve today. The first humans in the world, our ancestors, and they also face FOMO, believe it or not. In today's passage, Adam and Eve, they ate the forbidden fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil the one tree that they were not allowed to touch or eat from. And God said, you are not allowed, not even near this tree. But eventually the snake comes and tricks them. Remember, the devil is very tricky because all he does is uses God's words and tweaks it to trick us into doing something that God doesn't want us to do. I want you to listen to the conversation Eve had with the snake. The snake said, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? And Eve said, no, he said we may eat from the trees in the garden, but not this one. Because if we eat it or even touch it, we will die. And the snake responds by saying, you won't die. God knows that when you eat it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. It says in verse 6, it says that Eve saw the fruit. She saw that it was good for food. It, it, It was good for eating. It was pleasing to her eyes, and she knew that she will gain wisdom. And so she ate the fruit. She also gave the fruit to Adam. Adam ate it as well because he feared that he might have missed out on something. Adam and Eve were both in the moment where they felt like they were, they might have missed out on this power of having knowledge, of knowing everything, knowing what's good and evil, being able to define their own truth. It was, it was to become like God. Now, who, who could resist the temptation with the fact that if, if someone, if I can become like God, I, would, I would, honestly would not be able to resist that temptation. If I can have the powers that God had, of course I can't resist the temptation. And there's also no God in this picture. If I can become like God, what do I need God for? I can do everything as I please. The Garden of Eden had everything humans needed, but that wasn't enough for Adam and Eve. They wanted to satisfy their desires even more. They wanted the knowledge, they wanted the power, and they wanted to be like God. 
However, today I want to remind you all to remember these three things. When you feel like you may be missing out, remember these three things that you don't want to miss out on. The first thing is you don't want to miss out on an interpersonal relationship with God. And secondly, you don't want to miss out on Jesus, who is more than enough for you. And lastly, you don't want to miss out on pleasing and glorifying God. Again, the first thing is don't miss out on an interpersonal relationship with God. Because God created human beings to depend on Him and to have a relationship with Him. This fear of missing out, FOMO, fear of missing out is what destroyed creation the way it was supposed to be. FOMO destroyed the way creation was supposed to be. God created everything to be good because God loved humans so much. There was nothing, absolutely nothing missing in creation. There was nothing to miss out on. Even with all of creation, God created humans as well because God desired to have a relationship, an interpersonal relationship, an up-close relationship with humans. Here's how much God loved humans. When He created creations, He said it was good. Right? Everything He created from days 1 to 6, He said it was good, it was good, it was good. But after creating everything in creation and placing everything in place that He knew that humans would need, after settling everything where he wanted it to be, then he created humans, placed them right in the center of that garden, and he looked at the humans and said, it is very good. Again, when he created, when he was creating creation, he said each one of the things that he created was good. But when he placed humans in the picture, and he said, it was very good. God even created us in His image, in His likeness. Think of it this way. If you want to have a relationship with someone, they need to be similar to you. A human cannot have a relationship with the flower, for instance. It's just not the same. Right? You can't have a relationship with the flower because a flower doesn't have a face, doesn't have eyes, nose, ears, mouth. A flower is not the same as a human being. Whereas a human being needs to have a relationship with someone who also has eyes, nose, ears, and a mouth. Someone who has a face. But because of the fear of thinking that we're missing out on something, our selfishness overcomes us and we don't want to have anything to do with this so-called God. We disobey God. We don't need to listen to God because all the knowledge is in our hands. Just like how if we have the phone, we, we always think we're missing out on something. So we need more information, more information, more knowledge. The knowledge is what I fill my mind with rather than the knowledge that God fills my heart with. Then we feel guilty and shameful because, because of our sinning against God. When we disobey God, there's less God in our lives. And, when we, and then when we need to be filled with God's Spirit, then we know there's more of God in our lives. And then when we sin, we're not happy. And then when we're living joyful lives, then we can be happy. And then when we sin again, there's less Jesus. And then when we grow spiritually, there's more Jesus. But remember, when Adam and Eve was kicked out of the garden, although they were now going to miss out on the Garden of Eden, although they were going to miss out on this beautiful utopia, this, they were going to miss out on everything that God placed for them in the garden. They, there was one thing that they weren't going to still miss out on. Again, although they were going to miss out, what seemed like they were going to miss out on the Garden of Eden, they were not going to miss out on God's presence being with them. Because God was still with them, even as they left the garden. God continued to walk with them and continue to guide them. You know, we may think sometimes that God disappeared, or sometimes we doubt Him, or it may feel like He's not there, or sometimes it feels like we're missing out on deep moments in our relationship with God. But remember, we are never missing out on a moment with Him. No matter how much of a sinner we are, God loves us so much that He gave us even more than just creation itself. God gave us even more than we could possibly imagine. And that is He gave His one and only Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who is more than enough for us. And that's the second thing. Don't miss out on Jesus. Again, first thing is don't miss out on this relationship, this interpersonal relationship with God. And secondly, don't miss out on Jesus. Because Christ is more than enough. You'll never miss out. Christ 
is God himself coming down in the form of a human, fully human and fully divine. He, God came down himself to be with his people, to be physically with them, physically present with them, so that they don't have to feel like they're missing out on God. Also, Christ walked with his people whom he loved so much, and he walks with us even still today at this very moment. But in reality, we're scared of missing out. Why? Because even though we hear about Christ's promise of eternal life and being with Him, we're tempted to still feel like that's still not enough for us. We still fix our eyes on other things and think that there's other stuff that we still have to pursue. There's, there's still more that, that I want, that I need, that can satisfy my desires. Some things like social media, like Instagram, I need more followers so that I can feel better about myself. On Facebook, I need more friends so that I can feel better. On, on Kakao Talk, the more conversations I have, the more friends I have, uh, the more attention I get, the better I feel. It's as if we need more and more and more in our lives. And we let these things on social media get to us. Our popularity is defined by how many friends we have, how many likes we have, or even based on if our friends respond to our messages or not on Kakao. It's as if, think about it, it's as if Christ's sacrifice on the cross wasn't worth more than anything else. It, really, just think about it for a sec. Isn't Christ's sacrifice on the cross worth more than any of all this? Isn't Christ's sacrifice on the cross worth more than popularity, recognition, fame, worth? Because there's nothing that can compare to the worth in knowing that we are worth everything to Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, there is nothing that can compare to the worth in knowing that we are worth everything to Jesus Christ. Jesus is worth everything in our lives. And he went as far as paying for the price of our sins. He went as far as dying a painful and slow death on the cross. All for what? So that people can notice him and follow him more? Not necessarily. It was all so that people can recognize that Jesus loved them so much. It was all for you and I. It was all for us. It was to look at us straight in the eye and to tell us, hoping that we will recognize that Jesus loves each and every one of us. And again, I, I'm not here today to say that our phones are evil or that social media is bad or you know, all these, if we utilize well to the best of our ability, they're, they're great resources. But I'm just saying that sometimes we just let these things take over our life. We let these things become worth more than Jesus and His love for us. And there are negative consequences that we're not even aware of. We tend to want more and more and more. We keep saying, I just want just one more friend, just one more like, just one more, just one more, just one more. And then we start panicking because we need more and more and more. And the panic just starts growing more and more and more. Just like how Adam and Eve, just one more thing, just one more than just the garden. And that one more was to eat that fruit and to gain the knowledge of good and evil. That one more for Adam and Eve was to become like God. That one more brought them as far as disobeying God. But when they, when they ate this fruit, what might have looked like, they, what might have looked like satisfying their need actually became dissatisfaction because immediately they noticed their eyes were open and they saw their nakedness and they felt ashamed. And so stop trying to satisfy yourself and stop trying to somehow glorify yourself, make yourself feel better like you're God. Stop satisfying yourself and rather please God and glorify Him. And that's the last thing I wanna share with you all today. Don't miss out on pleasing and glorifying God. Ask yourself, who am I trying to please? Myself or God? Again, am I trying to please myself all the time or am I trying to please God? We wait to refresh our Instagram all the time to see if people are following us when God is right next to us calling us to follow Him. 
We look at Facebook and we wish we had more friends, more subscribers and likes on YouTube when God is our best friend and best, when God is our best friend and he is our pretty much our number one fan. There's this app called Snapchat where you take snaps of every moment, right? On your cameras, on your phones, or on, on our technology that we have. We take snapshots of our everyday lives, and yet we don't have enough time to, to snap a moment of God's creation that is around us. We get lost into snapping what, we, what makes us feel good, rather than taking a moment to just take in God's creation. The lens on our phones the lens on our cameras have pretty much become the lens to our own world. Worlds, Whereas there is a greater world out there. there, there the creation is so much greater out there. The volume button also, if you think about it, the volume button also, we can control what we listen to and what we don't want to listen to. It's as if we can block out the things that we just don't want to listen to. And when we want to listen to things, we can raise that volume button up and listen to what we want. Again, we have control, we have power. And if we think about it, are we trying to live life until I feel comfortable? Are, you, are we trying to live life until we reach a certain amount of likes? Are we trying to live our lives until we get what we want? Think about it. But today, I wanna to challenge us again with this very challenge. Just press off for a second in satisfying your needs and press on towards Christ. And take a moment to just press off on your phone and press on towards Jesus Christ and glorify God alone. The Apostle Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14, he says, It's not that I have already reached this goal or, or have already been perfected, but I pursue it so that I may grab hold of it because Christ grabbed hold of me for just this purpose. Brothers and sisters, I myself don't think I've reached it, but I do this one thing. I forget about the things behind me and reach out for the things ahead of me. The goal I pursue is the prize of God's upward call in Christ Jesus. That very goal is the prize of living in eternity with God and glorifying Him forever. Again, verse 14, it says, The goal I pursue is the prize of God's upward call in Christ Jesus. And that very goal is the prize of living in eternity with God and glorifying Him forever. Brothers and sisters, today, once again, I hope you don't miss out. I hope you don't get stuck in thinking that there's more that you have to get. That there's just one more thing you have to get, one more thing that that you can gain to satisfy your own needs. But there's something greater out there. There's something greater than the number of likes you have. There's something greater than the number of friends you have on social media. There's something greater than gaining your own knowledge. There's something greater than having, you can have everything in this world, but there's one more thing that is much greater than all that. And that is our relationship with God, Jesus Christ, who is more than enough, and giving God all the glory, honor, and praise. Again, our relationship with God, Jesus Christ, who is more than enough, and giving God all the glory, honor, and praise. What more do we need? So I challenge you this week. When you're, when you, when you're starting to fear like you're, when you're starting to have the fear of missing out, when you start getting anxious, when you start panicking and thinking, I need more, or that I need more control of my life, I want you to always remember that God loves you, that Jesus is more than enough for you. And let us give God all the glory, honor, and praise that He deserves.